our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. A hawk hunting birds near Katowice Airport in Poland. This is a safety issue for planes. A small twin-engine aircraft prepares to land. Beside the crew, there's a technician checking the settings as the plane uses a new landing approach by satellite called EGNOS. The pilot carefully follows the position information, route and altitude assigned by the system. He can land the plane safely, day or night, without using additional equipment because the system is on board. The precision approach made with the help of the satellite definitely increases air security, especially for the airports which are operating non-precise guidance approach systems. These new systems will benefit both general and business aviation, and safe airports will increase development in regions where they're located. To learn more about the EGNOS system, head to ESTEC in the town of Nordvik in the Netherlands. It's the research centre on space technologies for ESA. Javier Benedicto is the head of the Galileo project, the satellite navigation system developed by the European Space Agency on behalf of the European Union. He was also the project manager of EGNOS, which was developed by ESA. We are with EGNOS improving the accuracy of the GPS and achieving accuracies which are better than one meter in horizontal and vertical domain. But we are also uh, characterizing with EGNOS the integrity of the GPS system. Integrity of GPS is about uh, trustability of the GPS. GPS as we use it is fairly accurate, but not enough for some more sensitive applications where safety is an issue. The EGNOS makes GPS more precise. A signal is sent by terrestrial stations and picked up by GPS. Any errors in the exact GPS readings are corrected using EGNOS. It also takes into account atmospheric conditions that affect the signal quality. The corrections are then sent to a geostationary satellite, which in turn sends the corrected signal to Earth. The signal is picked up free of charge by receivers that are equipped with an EGNOS detector. Since March 2011, EGNOS has been given the go-ahead for guiding aircraft at European airports that don't have precision approach available. It's not only benefiting security, over a period of 20 years, EGNOS is expected to bring a financial return of nearly 2 billion euros. 20, 10, 5. Where is the return? It's really in uh, the performance and better operations of the aircraft. If the aircraft arrives at the airfield, um, at some point it has to decide if it has visual contact with the airstrip and if, if it will land or not. Um, if you can reduce that minimum, uh, because you have a better accuracy of your actual position and your safety margin becomes uh, smaller, then uh, there's less chances of a delay, less chances of a diversion, that you have to go to another airport because you cannot land at your destination airport, less chances of um, cancellation of flights because of bad weather conditions. Aero Days 2011 in Madrid provides a chance to showcase the latest developments in civil aviation. It was here the EU presented EGNOS through the Galileo Supervisory Authority. GSA is the agency created by Brussels for the management of satellite navigation systems. Now we find that many other user communities are also benefiting from this augmentation system. And with the GSA we ordered a few studies on other user communities such as agriculture, such as mapping. And it turns out that 60% of um, satellite navigation guided tractors are actually using EGNOS already today. For the past two years, the EGNOS system has been used in non-critical applications such as agriculture. Using the system, signal quality can add almost surgical precision to tillage operations or regulate rational application of insecticides, keeping them to a minimum.
find another application using EGNOS, we take a trip to the south of France. In Grenade, a partially sighted woman walks around town using the information given to her by a mobile unit. The satellite signal knows its position in real time and uses Pernasvip, a system specially designed for people with impaired vision. This is a module with sensors that records the movements. And here I have a module that contains the GPS receiver and receives all the EGNOS corrections in real time. Data is combined from the sensors, GPS data and EGNOS corrections to get a better position. When this partially sighted woman wants to go to the bank, she asks for the route to be entered into the system. The system gives directions and obstacles along the way in real time. I'm trying to compare three curves. The blue curve shows the theoretical route to be followed by the user. The green curve is calculated by the GPS position. And I have the red curve, which represents the improvement by EGNOS and our sensors. At the control centre, an operator knows the position of the visually impaired person at all times, and they can contact each other with mobile phones. If the woman wants to change her route, all it takes is a simple phone call. Hello, can I help you? I'd like to go to the nearest bakery, but I didn't record the route. I see your Castel Bajac Street and the nearest bakery is in Rue Gambetta. I'll send you the route. Goodbye. Au revoir. Thank you. Bye. After some reprogramming, new instructions are with the woman and she can be on her way. EGNOS is about improving the American GPS. But Europe has decided also to have its own system, which is called Galileo. So with Galileo, we're going to have a worldwide satellite navigation system that will fulfill the objectives of Europe, but also will serve citizens worldwide. At the end of 2011, the first two Galileo satellites will be in orbit. A Russian-made Soyuz booster rocket will launch them from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. More launches will follow until the Galileo constellation is fully operational, with its 30 satellites in medium Earth orbit at an altitude of some 23,000 kilometers. We have uh, deployed a very important test bed in Germany that is going to be used in order to test and develop Galileo applications. Berchtesgaden in the Bavarian Alps offers all the necessary conditions to simulate the Galileo constellation now. It's a basin entirely surrounded by high mountains, where stations at the peak send out emission signals. Let's follow the project leader of GATE, the name given to the simulation. In half an hour, the cable car takes him to the top of Benna, about 2,000 metres above sea level, where a transmitting station of Galileo signals. Within GATE, we are transmitting the real Galileo signals by using eight of these transmitting stations, and we are transmitting the signals into the valley to test Galileo equipment and receivers. The signals which we are transmitting are exactly the same as will come on later from the real Galileo satellites from space. The gate station plays the role of a virtual satellite. Eventually users will receive signals from the same amount of real ones. To monitor the whole simulation, a test vehicle regularly travels the 65 square miles of the simulation area. The red one is the GPS position and the blue cross here, that is the Galileo position. 
We are now operating the so-called gate Galileo virtual satellite mode, which is simulating a Galileo constellation within the testbed here. And you can see now that the simulated satellites have elevations and azimuth of a real orbiting satellite system. And it's in this beautiful location that preparations for the future are being made. It is a real testing environment outside the laboratory so where you can already perform today real tests of receiver, Galileo receiver equipment and Galileo um, user equipment, not waiting till all the Galileo satellites are in space. Satellite navigation has become a very important tool for many uh, activities, uh, uh, both financially, economically, but also for social development in the European Union. So we have come to the conclusion that we need to master the technology and have our own system, which we can control, which we can, for which we can define the services that it will provide, and that we can evolve into the future. So although the US, China, Japan and other regions, Russia, are developing their own systems, it is very important for Europe to have its own and not to depend any longer on the GPS. When the Galileo constellation is implemented, ESA will hand over all its operational management to the European Commission, as with EGNOS. <laughs>